Well, hi folks, I think I'm going to use this greenhouse again. I've not been told I can't use it, so I think I may as well use it again this year. So it's a big greenhouse, so I can get a few bits and pieces in, peppers and stuff. It's a bit old and a bit decrepit, but it's, uh, you know, it's near home and it's better. It's better than nothing. In fact, it's a lot better than nothing. I'll just show you what I've got in it at the moment. This is one of the one of my big onions. This was the ten pounder that I put to seed. And as you can see, it's sending out loads and loads of leaves now. And possibly in a couple of months, it should start sending a few flower spikes out of the centre. And then all you do then is just get to let the bees do all the work, pollinate the flowers, and then collect the seeds later on in the year. I've got another one that's still indoors, just in case we get a freak frost or this one dies. So I've got a couple to go at. And they're both from the big ones. Got a bit of stuff growing, these are the leeks I've set off in the uh, polystyrene tub as usual so they get plenty of depth of soil, tend to get nicer, nicer little plants. So they've got really good germination this year, so I've germinated them indoors and then as soon as they all come up I'll, I'll put them in sort of the relative cold of this greenhouse. I'll thin them out to about maybe 50 or 60 to this pot, so one every sort of square inch or so. But they should just tick along now and I'll plant those out probably May time when they're about sort of nine inches tall thick as a pencil or just a little bit thinner and these are the first of the potatoes these are actually germinate well not germinated sprouted indoors so they're a little bit leggy because they're under a bit of polythene and there was no light getting through but that's one in the pot these are these dead early ones and um, some in the bags I planted a few a bit about a week later I planted six bags all six pots in all so uh, all I have to do now really is just keep the frost off these, let them grow, keep them watered and we should have some spuds in around about 100 days from planting so the end of May maybe and then that should be a nice start before we get a few, uh, few growing outdoors. So not a lot growing on yet but it's still early, it's still only February but a few little bits and pieces just set up, just setting up. Alright folks, March now, a bit early March so uh, Start to do a little bit of thing, a little bit of stuff, so I'll just give you a little round up and show you what's been going on. Not a great deal, but uh, I'll just give you a quick look. So I've not got anything planted really in this main bed yet. This is the no dig bed, but it looks quite good because there's, there's hardly any weeds in it at all. So putting the mulch of compost on has done the trick. No weeds, no weeds showing really. The only thing I have planted is my garlic. I put three rows in there. Like normal, I didn't do a video of it this time, I've done a video of it every year for the last million years, but uh, really all I did was add some fertiliser and then push the cloves in six inches apart and about 15 inches apart in the rows, about an inch deep. So then it then need a little bit of cold for about a month just to get them started. So that's the first thing planted. But apart from that, nothing else. I'm going to put my onion sets in here the heat treated ones, I'm going to try some in here because I've never had much success with onion sets in this bed but uh, it looks pretty good so we'll see how they get on this year, I'm going to do half in this bed and half in the other bed so that's the main bed anyway, like I said not a lot going on. Over on to the other bit, this is where I had, this is the marrow bed where I put absolutely tons of horse muck in which is all sort of washed in a bit now which isn't too bad, it's absolutely chucked it down here for the last sort of month and it threw it down last night so it's everything is just just hideous at the moment. I stood on that this morning and nearly fell flat on my ass, so that was a bit of a close shave. Like I said, this bed, a few leaks left in, little tiny scratchy ones. So I'll pull those out. And these were the the remaining kale. I think I might be able to just get a little bit of new stuff off that. Even this late on. But like last year they're absolutely full of full of white fly and just I didn't really take much. And there's still there's still a bit of white fly on now because it's such a mild winter. But like I said, there's a few new shoots coming, nice and tender, so I should be able to get uh, a few pickings off those before they go to seed. So that's not too bad. This is where I'm going to grow my other onion sets. Oop, I nearly fell over again. Just worked this over today. It's where the turnips were growing. Again, I didn't dig it over in winter. No, it was a no dig bed, and the soil's absolutely fantastic. It's really loose. When I was pulling the turnips up today, it was absolutely full of earthworms, big earthworms. It must have been living off the roots of the and things like that. But they've absolutely 
you know, knocked the soil down fantastic and it's been a lot better drain than when, when I used to dig it over and then it used to sort of just get saturated so I'm, a, I'm sold on this no dig method now, seems to work for me. The old polytunnel bod job still standing up, look. We've had two, two more storms since, Storm Dorothy or Doris or whatever and Storm Ethel or Enith or something but like I said I'm not going to put a new cover on until it finally rips and it's irre irreparable so just going to keep it going, see how long we can keep it going, if I can get another year out of it just by sticking loads more of this repair tape on it should be alright because apart from those bits the rest of it's absolutely fine so I'll just go into the polytunnel now I've actually even though it still looks a bit of a tip I've actually dug it all over now I've just put all this fabric down just to keep the moisture in because it was quite dry but I've dug it all over as you can see it doesn't take much doing because it's it's well cultivated soil this it's had compost dug in for years so it's, it doesn't take a lot of digging over so it just tends to get a bit dry over winter when it's not been watered. Same thing, I've just dug that one over. And I've also dug out the carrot boxes and replaced all the sand with the same sand. Just uh, dug it all out, mixed it up and tried to clean as much of the old compost out. So they should be going in maybe April time, mid-April. It just needs wetting down and then the hose boring out and the compost putting in. I don't think I'll be growing any long ones this year because I'm not, I don't grow enough to warrant going up to Harrogate because you need to grow dozens and dozens and I only grow about a dozen in total so and I don't enter in any, I'm not going to enter at my local show anymore because I'm the only person entering so it's a false victory you know it's a hollow victory if you will and uh, it's a lot of work doing it so I mean I could basically enter anything at our local show and win because nobody else blooming grows them so I've got a few onions left, look, these are some of the giant ones that have just been sat there. Still perfectly edible, absolutely fine. The main bed, that's all been dug over now. A bit of a dumping ground for all my old canes and stuff, and my old onions. But what I'm going to do in this, because I'm not growing any onions this year, any giant ones or show ones, I'm going to try and put a giant marrow in, because I've never grown a marrow in my polytunnel, you know, under heat and uh, protection and stuff. So I've got a good old lump of ground to grow it in, it's probably 15, 20 foot long and I'll be able to let the plant grow about six, in, 6 feet wide and it's really good soil. Like I said, it's where I've been growing the onions for the last 15 years again, it's all the same, really deep, good, sort of rich soil. So it should, uh, should be good for a marrow and we'll see, we might get an absolutely huge one. Apparently they do grow a lot bigger indoors, but they don't weigh as much, so they must be, you know, slightly less dense, if you will. But it should be good watching a great big thing growing quicker indoors. And then the rest of them, I'm growing my giant tomatoes again. So they'll be going in either that bed or the other one. And I'm growing some giant potatoes this year called Condor, which I'll try and explain later on how we do those. But... Um, the world record's £10 for one potato, but I've got managed to get hold of some some seeds with great thanks to Tony. Tony O'Neill from UK Here We Grow was really kind and, and he sent me a load of seeds because they're like rocking horse shit, <laughs> ends teeth, sorry, to get hold of, this certain variety sometimes. But he had some spare so he sent me some, so thanks a lot Tony from UK Here We Grow for sending me those. I'll try and do them justice. I think I'll be growing those in this bed. This is where I grew my giant carrots last year, and I'm not doing the giant carrots this year again because I've been there, done that, I'm trying something different, so I'll give the potatoes a go. Again, really good soil, Look, it's just knocks, just falls to bits on its own. So that will hopefully be good for, for growing a giant potato in. But really, I've actually finally got my finger pulled out and done a bit of tidying up and digging, so we're ahead of schedule because nothing will be planted in here till at least April, so uh, all the hard work's done. Just need to wait until it warms up a bit and then the, we can get a few bits and pieces planted out. Hi right, folks, I'll just show you what the idea is with these giant potatoes. These are the ones, Condor. And by all accounts, what you do, it doesn't, well, it doesn't matter, I'll just use one of these, these of Charlotte. What you do is you let the chips grow, as you would normally, let them grow a little bit bigger. And then by all accounts, is you can dig, dig a chit out with a core of potato and then plant the chit and then let that grow into a little plant because you only want one sprout per plant which will then reduce the amount of potatoes per plant 
and then hopefully the less potatoes the bigger the potatoes and then what you do is you grow those on in a five inch pot let them grow a bit bigger take the plants out of the pot and then remove as many of the tiny little potatoes as you can hopefully just leaving one and then you plant that plant you know it sounds ridiculous that's hopefully you've just got one potato left on it in your bed so then all the energy will go into that one potato hopefully and then you, you end up with a giant potato and then throughout the year you can have a scrat about and if there are more than one potato hopefully remove the little ones and leave one but it's a laugh we're going to try it you know you've got to try these things who knows we might fluke a world record but uh, you've got to be in it to win it so anyway that's that's the uh, thinking behind the giant potatoes the variety is condor I've got that many, Tony sent me that many, I'm going to grow some in pots for eating as well because by all accounts they're a decent enough potato and they, they, they must produce a massive yield, so that's the spuds. Anyway, it's been a bit crap up here really, I mean it's the weather's been mild but it's been so slow, it's, things are so slow to come out, these are the first little daffodils that have come out from it and these have been indoors for the last month trying to force them, these little miniature ones which I love. I've only it's the first time I've ever grown and I'll grow a load more next year but uh, like I said everything seems to be slow even though we've had a, a mild winter. Anyway that's about it folks, just a little bit of a round up, nothing exciting going on. See you later.